Hey, what's going on everybody? And today I thought it would be interesting to take a look at something a little bit different. Instead of a standardized western comic book, I figured, you know what, let's look at a very interesting manga titled Batman and the Justice League Volume 1. And this manga is both written and illustrated by Shiori Tashirogi. I hope I pronounced that right. She is a Japanese uh, manga writer and artist who previously worked on Saint Seiya The Lost Canvas, which was also adapted into an anime, which is available on Netflix, and I highly do recommend it because I love that show. So imagine my surprise when I'm in my local comic book store, just kind of going up and down the manga aisle after I get done picking out the comic books I wanted for that particular Wednesday, because I do like to pick up manga from time to time. And then right over at the start in the B section, I saw it, Batman and the Justice League. American comic book characters reimagined in a Japanese manga. How could I not be excited for that? And this story is centered around a character named Rui Aramia, Again, uh, <laughs> forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. And he's a Japanese boy who actually comes to Gotham City in search of his parents who disappeared a year prior. Within minutes of being in Gotham, he ends up getting attacked by a local police, where then the Batman has to come down and rescue him. But not before displaying, he has a bit of his own skills as well. And this is where the story really starts getting kicked into gear as Batman falls into a mystery, trying to discover the origin of this thing called Gaia Juice, which is a type of juice that's circulated around Gotham, upping the crime wave in a really big way. At which Batman ends up confronting the Joker, along with a mysterious guy in a demon mask, along with a woman being held captive. The plot then starts to thicken as we learn that Lex Luthor is also involved in this plot, as well that prompts Superman to get involved. And then towards the back half of the book, we even get an appearance from Ocean Master. Because the idea that the book is presenting is that everybody is being pulled towards Gotham City because of these things called ley lines. And ley lines are straight alignments drawn between uh, various uh, historical structures and landmarks, with these ley lines giving off some kind of mystical energy. As the story drives on, we learn that Lex believes that he can use Rory in order to harness the energy from the ley lines to essentially rewrite history as he sees fit. And I will say, coming out the box, I really enjoyed this book. I think the art in the book is fantastic, and I know part of that's due to the fact that I like the way mangas are drawn. There's also a really interesting interview at the very end with Shiori as she talks about the challenges of adapting Western comic book characters for, you know, essentially a Japanese audience that will hopefully end up pleasing both fans of the superhero comics here in the US as well as still sticking true to what makes manga so popular in Japan. When it comes to design, I think she does very good with the characters. She tends to lean towards the new 52 design for say Superman and Wonder Woman, but then when it comes to Batman, she's got the more of the Arkham Asylum, Arkham Knight look from the video games. I think she lands the character personalities, you know, Batman feels like Batman, Superman feels feels like Superman, Lex is very smug, and the Joker is just insane. The new character Rui seems quite interesting as he really seems to be the bridge between the two cultures as we experience a lot of the story through his perspective. We come to know things like he is skilled in the martial arts, but he is also a pacifist and doesn't like to use violence. I like this idea that his family bloodline is the key to unlocking the gateway to these ley lines, and of course being the first volume, we're not sure what that means just yet. My one and only criticism of the book uh, does have to do with the character Ruri, whereas in the beginning of the book in one of his thought boxes, he does make the mention that he was born in Japan, he was raised in Japan his entire life and speaks very little English, yet somehow he interacts perfectly fine with everybody, talks to Bruce Wayne, talks to Alfred, talks to Superman, talks to Commissioner Gordon, Lex Luthor, and so on and so on. There's no stumbles in his speech, there's no times in the book where he seems to be confused by any of the American terminology used, which does make me wonder, if you're not going to use it, why bring it up? But overall, I really like the book, and I especially love the idea of the book with using DC characters in a manga, because if there were any American comic book lovers that would love to ever cross over into manga but not sure where to get started, I think this would be a great place to start, just because you're going to get something both new and familiar, and I also think that is 
uh, goes for the other side as well. You know, if you are always into manga, but you are interested but not sure where to get started with American comics, you know, this would be a good place for you to kind of familiarize yourself with, you know, characters like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and so on. And at the price point of $12.99, I feel like I definitely got my money's worth out of this. I've got the other two volumes upstairs as well, and I am eagerly awaiting the fourth. So Batman and the Justice League Volume 1, have you read this book? Are you interested in reading this book? I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.